Hello and welcome to another episode of All Things Real Estate. As always, I am your host, Kyle Siebeth with Century 21 Real Estate located here in Seekonk, Massachusetts with offices throughout Rhode Island and Mass. We are excited, we are pumped, and we are growing. And today, unlike any other, we have a special guest, a super special guest today. Special. We went on, we've had a lot of run, Jared, with, um, with a lot of the um, realtors in my office. Yeah. So we did a bunch of realtors, realtors. So today, we bring in none other than my friend here from Semper Home Loans. Introduce yourself, sir. Jared Manieri from Semper Home Loans here in Seekonk. Absolutely. And, and Jared, the reason I wanted to bring you on at this time of year is I think it's important because you can help a lot of the people that watch with a bunch of different things. Number one, let's talk about interest rates, where they are, where they've been, and where they're going. And then let's talk about what you're seeing in the purchase and in the refi market because I think 2021 should be another strong year, whether it's purchase or potentially some refis that didn't get done. So start with the rates. Like where are we at right now? If I were an FHA buyer, a conventional buyer, or a VA buyer on a 30-year fixed rate, right? So yeah, rates are still historically low, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had a couple of little blips here or there the past few months, but altogether, still at historic lows. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending upon qualifications and all that, you know, I would say, you know, your, your twos and threes. You twos know. and threes? Yeah. So to put that into perspective, right? So we're twos and threes on interest rates on 30-year notes. Let's, let's rewind five years ago. Where were we five, 10 years ago? Oof, uh, double. At least, right? Yeah, yeah. We were five and sixes. Yeah, normals was fours, and we touched into the fives. Um, I think it's been a while since we've seen sixes. But um, yeah, I'd say over the last five years, we pretty much were hovering around that four or five range. So when I bought my first house, I was at 6.75. Yeah. So that had to be 2010. Yeah. Two, does that make sense? Yeah, I would say. 2008, 9, 10 in that range? Yeah, I would say uh, after, probably right around that time, somewhere, you know, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, we probably were seeing rates getting up into the sixes. Yeah. Yeah. And now, <clears throat> now we've been in the twos and threes, but how long do you think we're going to stay? Like, what do you think? Are we going to have 2021 where we stay in that two, three range? Or are we going to start to see it? I mean, it's not going to go down, right? Is there any possible way to get to the ones? I don't think, fundamentally, I mean, listen, it, it sounds like it's, it, it would be nice. The truth is that as nice as that would be, it would be ca the the outside the other side of that would just be catastrophic. Right. Right. So everybody wants to make money under four hundred one k's. Everybody wants to you know make money on retirement. So is it impossible? No, I don't think it's impossible. I don't think it's likely. I would say there's probably a, a ninety nine percent likelihood we're not going to see rates down anywhere in like the low to. I mean, some some products are like if you're looking for a shorter term loan, you know we've seen some fifteen years in the lower twos, um, almost touched into the high ones, almost, but not on thirty years. Um, but I would say that we're, it's pretty safe to say we're at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, right? There's no possible. I, I can't no. see how money can get any cheaper. Fundamentally, I don't think we can go any it's lower. And if fine. it does, I don't think <clears throat> what's the other side of that's going to be good for, it, I for If us. it does, if it goes lower, that means we've seen a catastrophic yeah. misstep in the economy. Yeah. That means the economy has went to yeah, total. We're going to all be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. We're not worried about it. Nobody's getting, yeah. getting loans at 30 years. Two, two, two and three percent is close enough to, 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 to free, being right? in trouble. Yeah. How do you feel like, and again, I don't want to get political on this next question, but what do you feel like people look at with the election, right? So the election happened, whatever the results, did it impact the Fed fund rates? Did it impact the interest rate? Like, what is that going to look like in 2021? Yeah, so it hasn't impacted really anything yet. Like I said, there's been a couple of blips here and there, but nothing, nothing major. Now, my personal feeling is, I think once this whole election craziness settles down, I think we might see some changes. Um, and I don't know if it's going to be positive or negative, but I think the market's waiting to kind of see what actually transpires, who's mm -hmm. going to be in office. Mm -hmm. I just I got a feeling that's what's going to happen. Now, again, I don't know if it's going to be any huge shifts up or down. Who knows? If I knew that answer, I would have won Powerball yesterday. Right. right. But um, I don't foresee interest rates spiking anytime soon. I think we're going to remain pretty low probably for, you know, at least maybe halfway through 2021. Mm -hmm. And again, who knows what this whole pandemic thing, how this is going to play out. I think, as the pa I think while the pandemic is here and present, I think rates are going to generally stay, stay relatively low. I, they can't, right? Yeah. So here's my concern. I don't know if you thought about this. So we now have people, we've ingrained people with these low rates. So everybody just knows rates are twos and threes. That's why I asked yeah. you. Everybody knows that. Two and three on a rate, whatever. 
But, okay, what happens now when it goes to four and five? Hmm. How does demand change? How does purchasing power change? Are you concerned that if we hit that four to five, people now can't afford the same house and you're going to see a huge decline in demand? Like, what does that look like? I think so, yeah. I think as rates go up, I think demand is going to go way down. So that's yeah. probably, so the two factors then that could really impact this market, rates go up, prices start to flat. I guess you would say prices really Unless have, prices start to go down, then it'll balance said, Then the balance happens. So right. I guess thinking about this out loud, prices aren't going up. There's yeah. no way these prices are going any higher. So that's not going to happen. So if the rates go up and demand goes down, pricing should come down as well. Will start to flow that down should help, yeah. right? That should kind of help that spread and that purchasing power. So but what drives pricing? Demand. Demand. Supply and demand. And, right. And what drives right. demand is going to be the rate. So I guess your, your chicken egg, right? I guess the rates yeah. would happen first. Demand would then come down. Pricing would then come down and you'd hope to be in a better place. I would think so. Now, however, though, I mean, I, listen, you'd know better than me, right? But I read a report not that long ago. I figured it was, I, I don't want to misquote it. I don't know if it was NAR or someone, but I think they did a national study. And it's different in different parts of the country, but I think it was something crazy, like between seven to 11 people for every one house. I think it was buyers for every one house. That sounds right. Does that sound about yeah, right sound to you? Right. So, you know, is, the question is, is demand really going to come down? You know, uh, and I don't know. I mean, I think it might taper off a little bit, but I don't think we're going to see demand drop. I think the one thing that might change this whole landscape is if, you know, the coronavirus, if it continues to wreck the economy. And people can't buy. Can't and buy. people can't. If it takes the ability for someone to buy. I yeah. think the, see, I think you're wrong with that. I think that demand, your seven to eight per one, I think is right. I think that number mm. sounds right. That, that seems realistic. But at some point, people either quit they're going to stop looking. Yeah. Rates will start to go up and they'd be priced out of the market. Yeah. Or you're right, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 will hit people and I think you'll start to see. I think what the problem we're going to have here is forbearances. There's a lot of people that are in forbearance that haven't come to fruition and started yeah. foreclosures, started short sales. I think you're going to see, <clears throat> if you see rates go up, if you see short sales increase and you see foreclosures increase, that's going to bring everything back in balance. But I think, I think we need balance. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think people that have been in forbearance and, you know, that, you know, I just got a call yesterday, you know, somebody wants to refinance and sure it makes sense for them. But if rates were one, two percent higher, it wouldn't make any sense for them, you know, and then that person's going to be stuck. How do they repay that massive amount of money or, you know, do they have to modify, put it back at the end? So I don't think we're going to see what we saw like in 2007, eight, but I think we might see a mini version of that. So let me ask you a question. Now, if I'm a consumer, I'm a homeowner. What, what interest rate point does it make sense for me to refi? So if my interest rate now is 4% or 5%, I should be refining, right? Generally, yeah. I right? Mean, what's, what's the spread, though? So it's not always just about rate. You know, there, there's an old wives' tale that, oh, you know, one solid percent is, is a good savings. That's true and it's not true. Listen, if you have a $500,000 loan, hey, saving half a percent could be a home run. Right, uh, but if you have a hundred fifty thousand dollar loan, saving one percent might not save a ton of money. Right, right. So there's not a there's not a single there's not a single um, answer for everyone. Now again, it also depends what somebody's trying to do. Like you know, so I I did a refinance for somebody. You know, they were only saving maybe three quarters of a percent. It wasn't a huge amount. It was like two hundred thirty dollars to that person. Not a huge amount of money. But what they did is like, hey, you know, it, it, it's not changing my life. I'm just going to keep paying it to the mortgage. Well, they knocked seven and a half years off their mortgage for free. Right. Right. And they saved, you know, $182,000 in interest over the life of the loan. Right. So, again, there's different benefits you can get from refinancing. That's interesting. I mean, I bet there's a lot of people still out there that haven't done it. Yeah. And probably can save significant money. Now, what are your thoughts on cash out refi? So if I'm going to be, a, if I'm going to cash out, right, so if I have plenty of equity, I have 50% LTV, do you think it makes sense for that person to push that equity number up to 80%? and do a cash out refinance. Depends what they're gonna do with the money. With the cash, right? Right, yeah. So if they're gonna take it and squander it, no. Right. If they're gonna take it, reinvest it, and make money on it, and I mean, listen, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, if you're paying two, three, four percent on, on interest, it's pretty easy to outpace that. So I mean, you can stick a, your money in the couch cushion and pretty much make more than 2% right now. Right, I know? mean, so that's an interesting factor, right? So if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a homeowner and I have a bunch of equity, it's a no-brainer for me to pull out some cash at 2.5%, reinvest it at 10%, reinvest it at 6%, reinvest it at 4%. Right, right. Whatever that spread is, I'm going to win. Yeah, it depends what you're doing with the money. 
I'm going to win. Oh, and it's a lot easier to do so. A lot of people have that strategy, but they'll do it on like a line of credit or something. Yeah, yeah, which, it's is, easier. which is which is easier and it's variable. That you got to be a little careful of because that, you know, that home equity you got at four percent. I had one, and you know, it was at you know two point nine percent. It seems like seven point nine percent, right? I know so I have one too. When you can, if you can lock money in at two, three, you know, two and a half, three percent, three and a half percent, that's a pretty safe bet. I'm about to refinance right now. <laughs> I've got a bunch of houses I need to do this, and I'm just yeah. this is going through my head as we yeah. go through. These tactics are serious. Like yeah. if you're an investor or and you haven't really paid attention as you've been sleeping at the wheel, yeah. now is the time to refinance what you have, cash out. You could even become a private lender with that money. I would say now would be the time. So yeah, I mean we're probably at the peak, right? Things are gonna come down at some point in time, right? Yeah, because your value's here, your, value's your rates way up. are here. There's no better time to refinance. Right. You're not you're not gonna get any more cash. Now don't get me wrong, for the wrong person, it's not right, this is maybe a dangerous strategy. <laughs> exactly. You know what you're doing with your money? Yeah, I would tap your equity out sit on that and just because the opportunity is going to come to put that money somewhere right it could be a year it could be two years but you know take that money now have it set aside cash is king right you can do a lot with that money in, the, in the next like five ten years absolutely and you can actually even you can even use that money for the meantime to pay whatever that spread is of your mortgage say your mortgage went up a little bit yeah right so now you're taking some of that cash let's say you need a, a six month period before you have something to deploy it into who cares? Right, you take you're, 100 grand, it costs you 450 bucks a month. Right, who, who cares, yeah. right? So at the end of the day, guys, this is a good strategy and I think something that people should look at if you have other properties, if you have one property with a lot of equity, if you're, if you're entrepreneurial by nature, right, and you have other ideas, you just don't have the capital, yeah. there's no better time to do that cash out refinance. No, when values are high and rates are low, see, usually what most people have found was, you know, values were high, but rates were high. Right. It'd still go borrow money and still make money on it, but when you can get the best of both worlds, your value, you know, your, your equity's high, and you can borrow that money at the lowest number you'll probably ever borrow it in your lifetime. Right. Yeah. There's no better time to do that. There's no, no better situation for that. I would say What not. do you see for, um, what do you think December's going to look like, rest of the month? Buyers, refinance, what's, what's your outlook? You know, normally right around this time, and again, it's been a weird year, right? Because people have been home for, you know, eight months, right? Nine mm -hmm. months. So it's been a little bit of an abnormal market. Normally at this time of the year, you'd see people tapering off, right? Mm -hmm. Their kids haven't made it to the new school for the school year. Mm -hmm. But we're not seeing activity slow down. Me neither. You know, purchases are still going strong. People, I think, are adapting. They're saying, hey, if I'm going to be in my house for, you know, 20 hours a day, right, if this is going to be the new normal for the, you know, for at least the foreseeable future, I want to be in a comfortable house. Right. You know, I, I don't want to be quarantined in my house that I'm in right, right. now. You right, don't right, want to be, right. I mean, we were in that same situation, right? We bought right. a house. It just happened to you. Right. Um, so you see that. You also see a lot of people that are saying, you know what, there's, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my house 24 hours a day now. Start seeing, oh, I want to do the kitchen. I want to do that bathroom. I mean, we were just talking about this before the show went on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm remodeling my house. I can't get any products. Mm -hmm. Everything's backed up. So, you know, there's a lot of activity going on with um, home remodeling. Mm -hmm. People are remodeling their existing homes and turning it into, you know, their dream house. Yeah, they're either doing one of two things. They're either selling it yeah. or they're fixing it. Right. So if they're going to fix it and stay, they're going to invest more money than probably they would get back. You just never know, right? Yeah. They may just be overextending. And then if they're selling it, they're looking to just say, here's the good news. There's really no, with school the way it is right now, there's really no bad time for people to move. Yeah. It doesn't really, like online school is kind of funky right now yeah it's not really <laughs> yeah, it is like a lot of parents weren't built to be teachers yeah most of them need to go back to school so never mind being a teacher so i think it's <laughs> it's a little bit of a weird situation and i think that's why the market keeps going yeah. i think if we can have the weather stay moderate ha that we've had if we can have a moderate winter we're, we're going to be in for a really good year if you're looking to buy or sell yeah um it's a really good time for that yeah, I agree 100%. Um, 100%. You know, we have a client right now we're working with together, you know, and same thing, you know, they're moving mid year in December. You normally wouldn't want to do that if you had a kid in, in school, right? Disrupts Correct. them. But she's like, you know, they're only two days a week. It's not really, Correct. they're home more than they're in school. It's, you know, it's, so yeah, those people are still making those moves now. And I think that's what's carrying that traje trajectory right now through the winter is people normally you wouldn't want to move in the winter for a lot of reasons, one of them being mainly school, but I don't think people are caring right now. No, that went out the window. Yeah. I think that went out the window. I think with that, um, we're coming to the end, but I just want to thank you for coming on. I think it's, it's helpful for people to hear, you know, they hear my side, they hear the real estate yeah. side on the, on the realtor end, but I think on the lending side, just that strategy alone, 
can make someone a lot of money. Yeah. Just that cash out refi strategy alone can really make someone um, a lot of money and allow them to redeploy capital in a way where you're borrowing at such a low cost. There's so many, there's so many benefits you can get when rates are low. Don't get me wrong, it's not a, it's not a um, by default, it's going to make sense for everybody. Correct. But for 90% of people, there's a lot of damage you can do in a good way. Correct. On your personal finances, on your wealth, uh, you know, on your, your existing mortgage, on refinancing. There are a lot of opportunities. Which is great. So, guys, with that, we want to say thank you so much for watching another episode and hope everyone has a great holiday season. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.